What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jordan and today we're gonna to be doing a little bit more maintenance on the Porsche Cayman S. We're gonna be doing a brake flush today. And the reason why I'm doing it is because at the dealership it costs 300 bucks and that's a little bit too much. Now, a brake fluid change is definitely something that people will usually push off further than they should, and I'm definitely guilty of that too. But the main reason why you wanna do a brake fluid change is because over time, that brake fluid is gonna absorb moisture from the air. And when you absorb that moisture, it's basically water inside the system. And when you use the brakes a lot, like let's say you're going down a mountain or you're going on track and you're really on those brakes a lot, um, that brake fluid is gonna heat up and that water is gonna evaporate into steam. And when it expands into steam, it means there's air in the system and it means that you're not gonna have that brake pressure, which leads to brake failure. So to be safe in your car and also just to maintain the health of the brake system, you're gonna wanna do a brake fluid flush once every two years. Now to do this job with just one person and to keep it easy, you're gonna need a pressure bleeder. Um, you can get these on Amazon, a variety of different ones, but I'll put a link in the description of the one that I got. Um, you're gonna need some brake fluid. You're gonna need a jack. You're also gonna need a little plastic hose to, to take the brake fluid out of the caliper. You're gonna need a torque wrench that goes to 118 foot pounds, a 19 millimeter socket, and also a wrench, 11 millimeters or 7 sixteenths. It should be okay. You don't have to put a lot of force into it anyway. Once you get all of these things, uh, you're ready to do the brake flush. And so something that needs to be understood about the brake system is that the main reservoir for the whole brake system is right here in the master cylinder. And from that point, eventually it breaks off into individual lines to each wheel. And so basically what you need to do is you need to flush the brake fluid in each caliper at each wheel. But what you need to do is you need to flush the brakes that are furthest away from the master cylinder first and then progressively get closer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the uh, passenger rear first, then the driver rear, then the passenger front, and the driver front. And then after you do that and you flush all those calipers, the system is clean. So you can do one of two things. You can either put the whole car on jack stands or you can do it one wheel at a time. I'm gonna to choose to do it one wheel at a time, uh, mainly because I don't have the adapters for my jack stands to accommodate the Porsche Cayman. And what I mean by that is that there are very specific points that you should be lifting the car in the Porsche Cayman. There's one here, there's one there, and there's more on the other side. But basically these points are designed to hold the weight of the car and no other point on the car is designed for it. So make sure to look for a little post under there and uh, you just lift it up with your jack. Now, not only do we need to consider that each wheel needs to be bled individually, but each caliper has two bleeder valves, one right here and one right there. And what that means is that the first bleeder valve that you bleed, um, you're gonna have to bleed for a lot longer because you're gonna be clearing the brake, the brake fluid all the way from the front up until this point. And then the second bleeder valve is only a short run till about here. So the first one is gonna take much longer and the second one's gonna be quick, but you need to make sure to bleed both the front and the back. Now that we've got that rear wheel ready to start bleeding, let's start preparing our actual bleeding tools. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to expose the master cylinder by coming in the front trunk here, lifting up there, lifting up here, and this is just gonna pop right out. Once that cover is removed, go ahead and remove the cap of the brake fluid reservoir. For this job, it's gonna be a good idea to get a power bleeder. Um, it's safer and more reliable than doing the traditional pump your brakes method. Uh, but basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to AutoZone, get some of this Pentosin SuperDot4. Uh, you don't wanna get the low viscosity one, you wanna get the, the regular formula. And then you're gonna put, at the very minimum, one liter inside this power bleeder, but I'm probably gonna do about one and a half liters just to be safe. Uh, so I don't run out and start pumping air into the system. But basically this little guy is going to attach to the brake fluid reservoir. And then once you have this stuff inside the, th the tank, you just pump it and it's gonna start forcing that brake fluid into your reservoir without have you having to pump the brakes or have anybody else help you pump the brakes. So this is the best way to do it with one person. Next step is we're gonna put the 
little adapter here that goes on the top of the brake fluid reservoir. And you're gonna to wanna to pressurize this power bleeder. Basically it has a little pump on the top. And this is gonna simulate somebody pressing on the brake pedal. So when you go to bleed the brake or the bleeder valve, it's gonna force that brake fluid into the system just like as if someone's pressing on the brake pedal. We'll do 15 PSI and we'll leave it like that. And then we're gonna take our little plastic hose that is just a simple plastic hose. Take the other end of this and put it in your empty brake fluid container. And this will be a perfect reservoir to hold the remaining fluid. So to do this very first bleeder valve, it's gonna be about 500 milliliters or so of fluid. So to get it started, we already have the system pressurized and all we need to do is loosen this guy a little bit. And guys, that is literally it. You just drain a little bit of fluid from each bleeder valve. You're gonna do that on each wheel. I'm not gonna show you every single wheel because it's pretty repetitive, um, but do it on every single wheel. And you know what? The dealership charges you over $300 to do this. So I hope you guys think you can do it yourself. Once you're done bleeding all of the wheels, go ahead and let some of the pressure out of the pressure bleeder. And when that's relieved, you can go ahead and open up the reservoir. Make sure that the level of the res reservoir is all good and then close her up. And last, but certainly not least, go ahead and tighten down your lug nuts to 118 foot pounds. Make sure everything is nice and tight. And last, get in your car, press that brake pedal, make sure everything is nice and firm. You want that pedal to have a nice firm feel. And before you resume any regular driving, go on a test drive and go someplace that has a little bit of space so that way you can do some test braking. Brake hard, brake soft, do anything that you would do to try and test to make sure everything's working just fine. Uh, and then if everything's good after that, go ahead and resume like normal. So I hope this tutorial gives you a little confidence to do it yourself at home. And maybe you can save a little bit of money by doing this job in your own garage. So if you liked the video, go ahead and press the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. See ya.